Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another webinar session with FSM1. Before we start, just a few house rules. Along the presentation, if you have any questions, please feel, feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A tab, and our speakers will address your questions at the end of the present presentation. All right, so with that, let's get started and let's start our session today. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening. Welcome to the FSM1 webinar event where we help investors to invest globally and profitably. First of all, let me thank everyone uh, for attending today, today's session. My name is R. Bushan. I'm with the Client Investment Specialist team at FSM1 and I'll be your MC for this evening. And today's topic will be on retirement income streams, creating a lifelong financial plan with private retirement schemes or PRS which will be presented by Mr. Ng Su Hao, the Head of Retail Wealth Distribution from Manulife Investment Management Malaysia Berhad. Based in Malaysia, Mr. Ng has more than 20 years of experience in the financial services industry, covering asset management, banking, and life insurance sectors in Malaysia. He most recently served as the Chief Agency Officer in Northern Region of a multinational insurer in Malaysia. He also served as the Chief Executive and Director at the asset management arm of the insurer. Previously, Mr. Hung held several senior leadership roles at leading multinational and local asset managers in Malaysia. Mr. Hung holds a Bachelor of Art from University of Strathclyde, United Kingdom. He is a capital market, represent capital market services representative license holder and also a certified financial planner. With that brief introduction, let's welcome Mr. Hung. Over to you, Mr. Hung. The floor is yours. Hi, thank you. How is everybody doing? We're good. Okay. Uh, uh, can you hear me? See me? See my screen? Yes, Mr. We can hear you, but oh. we couldn't see All right. You. Um, thanks for having me here. This is an interesting topic. Um, because the market has been volatile, uh, people has been withdrawing whatever pension fund they have. So over the next half an hour, 40 minutes, I wish to give you as much content as possible. And towards the last segment, I'm going to refer everything back to you because it is all about you, your profile, what motivates you and what you're trying to achieve. All right, so can we just go ahead very quickly about what have I, what have I go, go, go to show, uh, get to show you? All right, so in Malaysia, all right, uh, the retirement landscape uh, was not the best pre-pandemic. However, post-pandemic, uh, it has gotten uh, slightly worse because people were withdrawing from their pension scheme. Uh, so uh, if I move on to the next slide. Yeah. So people uh, Mr. Are, are not getting... Mr. Ng, sorry to uh, interrupt you, but um, we cannot see your video. Ah. Okay. I think your camera is uh, facing um, the wrong direction. You are saying you cannot see my video. You cannot yeah, see me. Yeah, I cannot see you. Okay. Uh, I wonder why. Okay. Can you see me now? Yes, now we can. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. So maybe we start. <laughs> A very good evening. Yeah. So we were talking about, uh, you know, there are three pillars when you come to uh, retirement. 
the first pillar is what the government, you know, will be providing to you, like um, um, a medical, uh, certain uh, subsidies, uh, what the government will be supporting you post uh, retirement. That is one pillar. You depend on the government. Second pillar will be the pension scheme uh, that is run in our country. So the third pillar is voluntary. That means up to you whether you want to take it up or whether you want to do it uh, with your own contribution or not. So what you are seeing from the current slides right now, that the three pandemic related withdrawal since 2020 has caused a lot of uh, uh, reductions in the pension account that they have uh, in the country. So all the three slides just now, with a lot of content, I have summarized for everyone in a video. So maybe we just play the video so that you can, um, you know, get the information in a convenient manner. Malaysian would require Retirement may seem like a distant dream, but it's never too early to start planning for your financial future. Did you know that a Malaysian would require 600,000 ringgit to retire comfortably, but only 4% can afford to do so? What is more alarming is that 6.3 million Malaysians under 55 have less than 10,000 ringgit in their provident fund. How can we ensure that every Malaysian can enjoy a secure and fulfilling golden age? A regular savings plan can help you achieve your retirement goals, even if you're starting as little as 100 ringgit. Regular savings plans are a great way to take the emotion out of investing. By investing a fixed amount of money each month, you are applying dollar cost averaging method in building up your retirement nest. The sooner you start saving for retirement, the more time your money has to grow. Embark on your retirement journey with Manulife I Fund's PRS Regular Savings Plan today. Right, I hope you enjoy all the information and the video we specially you know, created for this evening. So for everyone out there, can I just ask every one of you a simple question? How much do you think is enough when you retire? You know, uh, you could be uh, someone who has already retired or you could be going into retiring, retirement soon. Uh, why don't you share with us what do you think is enough? Um, 3,000 monthly expenses, is that good enough for you? 5,000 in this inflationary period? Thank you, so Pura will say 4,000. Okay, that's interesting, all right, because I thought I would need slightly more. You know, um, I've, I've read uh, many uh, consensus out there. The consensus is, the replacement income ratio uh, will be about 60 to 70%. Meaning if you are earning 10,000 right now on a monthly basis, when you go into retirement age, 60 to 70% equals to 6,000 or 7,000. That is what you require to continue with your reasonable lifestyle. Maybe a bit scaled down, watered down, but that is what you need. Don't ever think about you could uh, easily reduce by half or all the way to one third. You know, uh, it didn't quite happen like that. Unless you have a strong dependent, uh, like your kids, someone supporting you. But again, you know, in real life, we have seen a lot of example. You know, if I ask you a question uh, about this, what do you think is the most reliable uh, retirement source of income? Is it going to be uh, supports coming from the children? Or is it uh, supports coming from your spouse? 
or is it going to be your asset? Like you own a commercial unit and the commercial unit is paying you a good rental that uh, will sustain your retirement lifestyle. So is it option A, children, B, spouse, or a real asset? All right, if we can move on. All right, so um, depending your age, your locations, uh, let's say uh, the Malaysian's male life expectancy, you know, 73 years old, so I think it has increased. Uh, if you retire at the age of 60, you basically need to spend another 13 years. So this is um, quite important because you basically need a million ringgit in today's value in order to spend 7,000 ringgit per month for 13 years after you stop working. So just now, someone mentioned you need about uh, 4,000. So I think the examples is uh, close enough. If you own uh, 780,000 ringgit right now at the age of 60, then over the next 13 years, you can spend 5,000 ringgit a month. However, you know, I think there is a tendency of uh, underestimating uh, the monthly expenses at times. Uh, you could be locking yourself in a house, um, but you know, there are actually a lot of expenses in my opinion, because you still need a life, some lifestyles. Uh, you want to watch a movie, you want to be able to drive, you want to uh, stay in a decent place and the decent place need uh, upkeeping and maintenance. Uh, uh, you must, you should be taking some forms of uh, supplements and once in a blue moon, you know, you want to buy someone a dinner or someone, you know, an old friend, an old colleague, inviting you um, uh, to a wedding ceremony because the, the kids are getting uh, married. So there are expenses, uh, maybe optional, you know, I don't want to go out, I don't want to mix with anyone. I just want to be alone. So your retirement life, there's no lifestyle, there is no even uh, dignity in it. All right, so it's for single to answer the questions from uh, iPhone EDC. So that is per pax, you are right. So if you are referring to two person, you know, multiply by two, you need about uh, 1.5 million. So you, each of you can spend 5,000 a month. All right, so after we recognize some of this figure, let's move on. All right. Um, you know, we, we, we recently feel this a lot. You know, when I talk about these particular slides, you know, I reminded people out there about the impact of, of inflation. You know, when I was a lot younger, uh, a plate of noodles, maybe five ringgit, then seven ringgit, eight ringgit, nine ringgit. Now in KL, nearby, uh, my office, uh, located in Damansara Heights, you know, our Menu Life office, Damansara Heights, uh, to get a plate of noodles at the coffee shops, not a cafe, will cost me about 10 ringgit or 11 ringgit. You know, so if my retirement saving or if my investment to sustain and fund my retirement life cannot cope with inflation, you know, you're going to see that declining trend, the purchasing power of yours is going to decline. And I bracket currency to highlight the recent impact of ringgit depreciations. You know, if you are having ringgit, you basically you know, can consume uh, local products, local food, local services, maybe it will be very pricey uh, to actually get something that is imported. All right. So, you know, I think I don't have to justify this anymore because inflation is real. You know, uh, cost of living is getting higher. You need a lot more than what you thought. Yeah. So this is about learning from the 
financial guru. Uh, this is a very famous uh, quadrant. It says, um, if you are an employee, you have a job, you, you don't work, you don't get paid. If you are self-employed, good for you, you own your job, no one is going to fire you. You work for yourself. But if you are a business owner, you own a network of people who work for you, which is good. However, you know, uh, the best thing about being an investor, money works for you. You know, not just people, not just the job, but money creates money even when you are sleeping. All right. So next, you know, that is from the financial guru. Investment is, is one of the best. Um, some financial planning concept. Yeah? You, uh, we normally start by looking at a person's assets and liability. So you look at your current uh, asset and then looking at your cash, your property and your savings. Uh, and then we ask, do you want to consol consolidate? Uh, we ask simple questions about how much is the loan? Is this still outstanding mortgage or uh, outstanding car loans or outstanding personal loan that you want to uh, settle? Because once you get rid of liabilities, you know, assets will generate more assets in a compounding manner for everyone. If I move on to the next, let's look at this, yeah? Some simple strategies. Number one, if you just want to maintain moderate investments, you can continuously invest during a, a retirement. So that will enhance your capital, all right? You will prolong it because you, you keep investing in it. You are not withdrawing from the capital. So the capital, if you do it well, will be intact. And if you reach that particular stage that you have never need to touch the capital because the interest payout is good enough, this retirement plan can go into indefinite. That means you, know, you won't exhaust it. You can even pass it on to your next generation, your loved ones, your kids, your family members. Um, we have also asked people to consider income funds because income funds pay out dividends and investment like this normally not as risky, not as volatile, even though 10 years could be a, a long period that we can you can withstand any market events and market volatility. However, you want some consistency. So income fund suits you a lot. You know, we have got um, uh, plenty of uh, dividend funds around the industry. You know, they pay uh, maybe 5%. Or six percent, or potentially even higher, depending on the market situation. Like right now, high interest rate environment, you actually uh, get uh, potentially higher paid up. All right, be it uh, be it bonds, be it uh, um, equities, be it uh, property. It, it depends on a few factors. Uh, the last one, you know, when we talk about a simple financial plan is the ability to consistently enter into the market using dollar cost averaging effect. That means you buy high, you buy low, you buy consistently. We have got uh, many investors uh, using uh, a simple investment plan that on your salary day, for example, you will be contributing a couple of hundred uh, into, uh, let's say, PRS, the scheme here for your retirement. And after a while, if you are young and you start early at the age of 25 and you get into some growth funds, all right? The growth funds objective is to uh, grow the money uh, in an exponential manner if you are referring to the next 20 years. In so for that, 
if you get in consistently every month, you actually ignore the market behavior. You know, you have the chances of buying the market at really cheap. When people were nervous, they sell off, but in this plan, you know, you get uh, the best of both sides. You know, consistency, not just from the income funds alone, but you are entering the market, you know, with various uh, entry points, be it high, low, or market average. All right, so something for you to consider, sign out a plan that deduct every month, all right? Um, we have seen a simple plan that people sign up, uh, 150, 200, there's nothing wrong with that. But I just want to tell you, uh, I have also seen people's um, uh, monthly plan, uh, the deductions goes up to 10,000 a month. All right, so there are some uh, people who can afford that. But you know, without uh, talking about the figures, because the figures is really how much you can afford to invest right now, and that equals to how much you can afford to spend in the future it is highly and directly correlated. So this slide is referring to, let's ensure we have got a stable income. So that is about diversifications of income sources. Just now I talk about dividend funds, I talk about bonds that pay interest and coupons. I spoke about property that gives rental. So the more diversified you are, like in different regions, in different countries, you know, it will uh, work better uh, for you when it comes to uh, diversification. You see, we have experienced MCO all of us the last few years. You know, it can be quite risky when you put everything in one basket. And when that asset class went down for, you know, a period of two years, you know, is a lot of anxiety, uh, which is uncalled for, uh, for your retirement. Market stability is good. And how do you achieve that? You achieve that, as I say, using dollar cost averaging, or, or you take a balanced approach and periodically review it. You know, you have one third of this asset class, you have another one third concentrating in growth, you have one third, which is being a very defensive strategy. All right, so with that, there are some common uh, income uh, strategies that are useful uh, for retirement. Next. You know, again, uh, very common. Why are people not doing this? If you remember what I have said just now, you know, um, it's a three pillar uh, pension scheme. Pillar number one is what our governments are giving us. For example, the subsidies uh, post retirement. So coming from the government. Pillar number two is your pension scheme. For example, our country, I, as an employee myself, I need to uh, deduct 11% of my salary and my employer will contribute another 12% going into uh, the KWSP. So that is the pillar two. The pillar three, because the pillar one and the pillar two from whatever I have covered over the first 15 minutes, you know, the inflations, you know, the 5,000 a month, the, the currency impact, it has shown that not enough. So this pillar three is voluntary. Voluntary is up to you. When it's up to you, you know, our experience tells us, people say, I am too young, you know, the age 20s, I'm too young, time is on my side, you know, <laughs> so don't have to start so early. But when you enter into the 30s, you say, too many expenses, pay, pay for your future first. 
when you are entering the 40s, you know, children come first. You know, the tuition fee, the education loans, whether you name it, at every stage of life, you have got something. And then at your 50s, you still supporting your children and, and parents. And with that, you are playing a lot of catch up because from 50, if you want to accumulate a pool of retirement funding, I think it's a bit too late. And there are a few options when you are a bit too late. A few options. Options number one, when you are too late, yeah, you, you can't accumulate what you want. Option one, don't retire. Sorry, don't go to this slide first. Option number one, don't retire at the age of 60. Retire at the age of 75 <laughs> to get your income. Option one. Option two, don't get one job. Get a second job, a part-time job. And if you can, you know, when you are at home with the two jobs, get another freelance uh, uh, co uh, contract to work on. <laughs> or cut all your spending. Uh, don't go out. Uh, no entertainment. Uh, stay at home. No uh, luxury goods. Even the basic necessity. You go all the way to the lowest range. So those are your options. But my most preferred option is increase your rate of return. And that's where we spoke about investment. And that is where the financial guru just now suggested the best thing is not just about people working for you or you are your own boss. The best thing is about money is working for you even when you are sleeping. All right, so next, how do you want to achieve it? The next slide, the best practice, rule of thumb, start as early as possible. Because if you start in your 20 over uh, age, years old, you have the next 30 years to accumulate. And the compounding effect is a lot, all right? It's a lot. Uh, someone who, who invests consistently on a monthly basis with a 10 years gap, with a 10 years gap, A, start, okay, maybe 25 years old. B, starts maybe 35 years old. Even though it's just 10 years delay, when the both of them reach the age of 55, the difference could be in a uh, uh, million ringgit. A could have maybe three to four million, depending on your rate of return. If it's 8%, maybe three million. All right, you have a lot of calculator out there. You can use it to get a more definite number. All right. And the one that start later, probably get half of it, 1.5 million. Just a period of 10 years make a lot of difference. Of course, you need to diversify. And then the regular review and adjustment is necessary because when the market goes down and then you lost 10%, and if you are not buying uh, at the discount and the market goes down further and you are still not buying at the discount of 20%, discount of 30%, you may end up losing what you have planned for. So um, discipline is necessary, especially for a group like all of us here. All of us here um, are trying to do it ourselves. When we do it ourselves on a voluntary basis, I've seen plenty of examples in life that people don't necessarily do the right thing and the best thing for themselves. And it's not just about money. You know, um, let's say about health, you know? I give you a, an example about health. A lot of people, in fact, everyone knows that, you know, uh, diabetes is uh, costly uh, to your life. 
and diabetes is costly uh, and dangerous and put you uh, at risk at any point. However, does it mean that everyone stopped uh, eating a lot? And does it mean that everybody is uh, slim and good, fit and healthy? They know, but do they necessarily do it? If you go out uh, in today, you see less smokers. You know, but every smoker know smoking is bad. But they, they, they are still doing it. So when it comes to financials and retirement planning, I think every one of us know we need funding. And we need the funding to be solid, you know, sustainable. But when it comes to voluntary, it's up to you. It's your choice. You may end up being a smoker, being uh, someone who is at risk of um, hypertension, diabetes, you name it, all right? Because your lifestyle is in your hands and you may not be doing it correctly. All right, so is it very hard if you look at uh, what we have? Is it very hard or not? Can we go to the next? Yeah, this is the first time I'm uh, showing this example. Uh, that is my mom, 80 years old. Uh, the picture was taken very recently. Uh, I, I grew up in a extremely humble, I could even use uh, a below average uh, family when I was young. So I, I lost my dad uh, when I was still studying and I have two, two siblings, so three of us. When my dad was still alive, he was a primary school teacher. So primary school teacher, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you can make a guess uh, how much their salary and earning is. And this lady do not have the opportunity to complete, uh, to even start, I think, her primary uh, school education. And she's housewife, taking care of the three sons. And when my dad passed away, um, she helped out uh, in tailor's shops. So she she's not a, a certified tailor, but she can uh, make clothes for people. And from that, she has got some very simple financial plans. You know, someone uh, who didn't even study up to uh, primary six. You know, a very simple uh, financial plan. Number one, be thrifty. Don't overspend. Common sense, right? But when you execute it, you know how tough it is. Uh, number two, when you have assets, all right, when you have a house, when you have a hundred thousand in the bank, you must really treat it like an asset that is immovable, that you can't touch. You've got to imagine that asset is not in existence. Don't ever use it unless it is life-threatening situations. So that is what my mom taught me. And um, other than a few good um, uh, cultures and, and um, uh, uh, real life practice, she learns about investing into mutual funds, unit trust, and even stock market. So the picture right in the middle, I think is about um, less than a month old, uh, about 11th, I see her, <laughs> reading the stock market <laughs> or reading some news uh, before she goes to sleep. So, you know, that picture, if, she, if my mother see this picture, she will scold me because she said, oh, wow, that is a ugly piece. Why do you choose this? All right. So that, that simple planning about, you know, be thrifty, know your objective, 
highly motivated because the aim is to send the three kids to tertiary education. And she managed to completely be in a, a, humble, a humble job, uh, but she does a little bit of investment in the market and um, she completed it, all right? So I'm one of the three siblings. I have my own family, my wife, uh, my daughter and my mom, I'm supporting them. And I have my financial plan as well. And my financial plan is a lot more complicated, you know, such as uh, in my will, I get to create investment trust. I get to create a trustee so that if I kick the bucket, you know, how much money, you know, is to be given uh, to my mom, to my wife, and most importantly, to my uh, children. I don't want my children to receive a lot at the age of 21, still immature, maybe not even 25. So I have written uh, uh, different things uh, in my will about this. So it's all planning and planning. It's the same, be it education planning, retirement planning, or family planning, all right? So, is it hard? Let me tell you, it is not easy, but if you have a, a flair of it, it is very natural, you know? It is very natural uh, to be thrifty, all right? If we go on to the next, after learning some uh, tips, you know, um, we are from uh, Manulife, we are global, uh, asset manager, we are managing something like US 1 trillion around the globe. And next, I will show you we are a global player uh, in the retirement space. Like in Canada, the retirement market, uh, you don't really have um, uh, uh, the pillar tool, like what we have here. You need to uh, uh, contribute. Uh, Likewise, Hong Kong, uh, you don't have an EPF, you have a mandatory provident fund. The system work out to be the same, but the, the scheme is run by private asset manager. So out of four Hong Kong residents, one of them is Manulife customer. So our market share in the retirement uh, NPF space in Hong Kong is about 20 odd percent. So we are a household brand uh, when it comes to retirement. Likewise, we are reputable in Indonesia and also US. The 401k plans, you have, if you have heard about it, the super annuations, if you have heard about it, you know, we are quite good. Uh, uh, we consider ourselves subject matter experts. All right, next. So, you know, in Malaysia, we have got our core funds and the conventional core funds. That means you have got aggressive, you have got moderate, you have got conservative, and you have the Sharia version, which is, you know, the more aggressive, we call it the growth, and then moderate risk, and then conservative risk. All right. If I can go show you the, the next slide. This is the core fund, because if you, are not sure what to invest in, you just go default. Default means it follow core funds, following your age, and they will do fund managers like us and the system and the product design will switch uh, according to your age. In this example, if you are, let's say 45 to 50 years old, you will automatically be given a moderate risk, a moderate investment portfolio. But the moment you step into age 55, you know, the money that you have will be invested into what we call the conservative pool. You know, the more conservative, the less likely you get a very high return because it's, it's being conservative. But this is only at the age of 55. 
55 to 75, or if not to 80 years old. It's still about 20 years, if not 25 years post-retirement, post, uh, post your jobs. I think spending 4,000 or 5,000 per month per person, you may want to rethink about it. Uh, I don't think it's enough, especially if you are from city. You know, uh, KL City is definitely not quite enough for me. All right, next. We also have our non-core funds. And our non-core funds is basically getting people to diversify even more. So we have got uh, a Sharia, uh, PRS Golden Asia, and we have got the Asia Pacific REIT, basically buying into the Asia Real Estate Investment Trust. And we have the Global Sharia REIT, buying into global big properties. You know, uh, 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 you don't have to sign sales and purchase agreement. You don't have to manage your property. You don't have to get a tenant. You don't have to collect the rental. You don't have to find new tenants and things like that. It's run by a professional company. We just buy into uh, the REIT and the REIT will give us dividends and the REIT uh, will appreciate in capital because you are the investor, you will receive the dividends and you will enjoy the capital appreciations in the property cycle. So all the three non-core funds that we have now in Manulife, if I can use one word, one key word to describe the market situations we are in now, my choice of words will be trading at discount. You are buying and investing Shara PRS Golden Asia at a good price. You are investing and getting into REITs at a very good price because of the interest rate cycle. So what are these three funds all about? Before I go into that, let me just tell you, if you invest in these three funds, up to 100,000, we give you free insurance. What do you mean free insurance? So if you buy uh, the REIT fund, for example, up to 100,000, the conventional version, then we give you the conventional insurance. If you are getting into the Sharia Global REIT or the Sharia Golden Asia, we give you the Takafu version. All right. If I can move on about this added advantage that we provide to our PRS member of the non-core funds, what are our non-core funds? Which I say is trading at a discount. First of all, this Manulife Sharia PRS Golden Asia is investing 50% of your fund in China and another 50% of your fund into India. The two big emerging markets that is thick to be the number one economy maybe 20 years down the road and the number one and the number two economies maybe 30, 40 years down the road. So if you are buying the future, if you are now 20 to 30 years old, getting into this, you know, will really grow your capital in a big way because you have got a 10 years, two decades or even two and a half, three decades to grow it, the, these two countries are growing rapidly. If you look at the GDP, these are you know one of the most exciting countries that we are watching over the last 10 years and definitely over the next 10 to 20 years even. So next, I have another video for you to understand about India. Introducing Manulife Sharia India Equity Fund, the first India-focused Islamic equity fund launched in Malaysia. Explore Sharia-compliant investments in India, one of the fastest-growing emerging markets as it rises post-pandemic, fueled by government initiatives to attract foreign investment and accelerate internal growth. 
India's growth agenda focuses on growing its manufacturing sector to create opportunities for import substitution and increase its global market share of exports. To achieve manufacturing competitiveness and lower logistics and supply chain costs, the Indian government has launched major infrastructure projects such as the National Infrastructure Pipeline, Dedicated Freight Corridor Program, Port Infrastructure Upgrades, and Transportation Corridors. Why invest in India now? India has favorable demographics. It is the second most populous nation, home to 17.7% .7 of the world's population. It is the world's sixth largest economy. The country's rising income and domestic consumption drive industries, a young workforce to power its economic growth. The government's Make in India initiative is slated to transform the country into a global business hub which focuses on developing adequate physical infrastructure for foreign companies to set up manufacturing units. The initiative is expected to drive growth in the following sectors Automobile Aviation and Space Biotechnology Chemicals Construction Electrical and Electronics Pharmaceuticals Infrastructure Renewable Energy Textiles and Garments Thermal Power Wellness Tourism and Hospitality India is positioned to potentially be the world's next manufacturing powerhouse and a rising investment destination in global multinationals China Plus One strategy, fueled by competitive wages and a young workforce. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. A bit of corrections here. India is now the most populous. So this is a fun for PRS member to choose from Manulife. 50% in India, 50% in China. So without uh, you know going into details, Let's watch another video. And this is China. China began reopening in 2020 after a strict lockdown that lasted for several months and enjoyed the resumption of economic activities. However, the re-emergence of COVID-19 cases in China in 2021 was a major setback for the country's efforts to contain the virus and this has led to a series of lockdown in China. China's government has been cracking down on a number of industries in recent years, including education, property, and technology. The government has cited a number of reasons for these crackdowns, including concerns about inequality, competition, and national security. To reduce the financial burden on families and to ease the pressure on students, the Chinese government launched a crackdown on the country's education sector in July 2021. The Chinese government introduced a number of measures to cool the property market, including raising down payment requirements and limiting the number of homes that can be purchased by individuals. These measures have been successful in slowing the growth of the property market, but they have also led to a decline in home prices in some cities. With the crackdown in tech companies, this has led to increased competition in the Chinese tech industry. This is because the government has forced some of the largest tech companies to restructure their businesses and to give up some of their market share. This has created opportunities for smaller tech companies to grow and to innovate. China reopening in 2023 has led to rebound in economic activities and surge in retail sales. Hong Kong's retail sales jumped by record 40.9% in March and mainland China's retail sales rebounded significantly by 18.4% in April. Airports are bustling again as travel demand picks up. In May, nearly 51.7 million air trips were taken in China. International right, flights so are I, also I, recovering. I to add on here, your numbers. You know that Chinese equity has not been doing well over the last two years. So. My keyword remains, if you are entering the market right now, uh, you know, it's trading at a discount. So can we move on to the REITs? I'm conscious about the time I will be able to finish you know, my presentations in a few more minutes. So my favorite is REITs because with even thousands of ringgit, I can actually get exposures to worldwide properties like the following slides, what kind of worldwide properties? So we are talking about industrial parks, we are talking about you know, shopping malls, and we are talking about the more um, uh, modernized REITs, like uh, uh, telecommunication towers, 
uh, the 5G will need to use some of these infrastructures and buildings and real estate uh, to facilitate. So this is uh, uh, very happening. Uh, cloud and data center. So logistic and warehouse weeks are very popular because there are a lot more online shoppings and stuff like that. So to get a, 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 a warehouse, you know, for uh, people to stock up their goods in transition, it is now in hot demand. Of course, we have got residential, medical center, retirement homes. You are exposed to worldwide properties like this, and you just need to um, uh, uh, find the right fund managers, uh, be like what the financial guru has said, let the money uh, work for you. All right, so next, I just want to let you know, uh, Manulife in Malaysia, we have done well uh, by uh, collections of our awards. Uh, these are our recent awards. Uh, we are the best overall fund house for equities, you know, for uh, mixed assets, uh, Sharia series, uh, Sharia compliance series, and then in fixed income as well. And then they brought our funds and our trade record to compete at the global stage. And then for that, uh, we are also the best mixed asset fund manager for Sharia compliance series at the global stage. So we won that award as well. So well done and kudos uh, to all my fund managers. All right. This is the last session because earlier we have spoken about what could be some easy financial plan. We spoke about pillar one, pillar two, but the most important pillar three uh, because of the nature is voluntary. And we spoke about, you may underestimate your future uh, requirement. And a lot of uh, numbers from uh, the pension system that we have in Malaysia are pointing towards people are not having enough. And the, and the considerations of inflations, currency depreciations, you want to contribute as much as you can and um, invest. Like my, you know, poor old age mom uh, who really suffered uh, for, her, for her younger days. I'm very indebted uh, 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 to have uh, someone like her. But step number one that you really need to ask yourself, what is your number? I think if you want to have a reasonable, reasonable uh, retirement funding, in today's world, I will start with 4 million ringgit, if not 5 million ringgit. If you, if you have a total of 10 million ringgit, then you will be very comfortable. You should be very comfortable because simple mathematics, if you have 5 million, all right? And the 5 million generate you a 4% return because you don't want risk, high risk kind of returns anymore. So 4% return, you get about 200,000 a year. And if you divide 200,000 a year, that is 10 over 1,000 a month. So, you know, that is quite comfortable. May not be lavish, but, but you know, very comfortable. Uh, for my for for many people, uh, uh, living standard. But first of all, what is your number? If your number is one million, I think that is not too bad. You can still go on. However, if your number is is not sure, then you got to play with a lot of financial calculator and be candid about your spending. All right. Next, about you. Other than what is your number? Because this is voluntary, you know you don't have enough, or maybe you have enough, but you have a bigger purpose in life. It is not only about your retirement funding. It is also making your family members and your friends, all right, be comfortable with you. 
rather than dependent on your family and friends. You know, I would like to be a father that can um, bring my whole family members for a yearly overseas trip, if I can, and contribute to the community for those who are in need. So again, there's a purpose in life, not just about money. All right, next, still about you. Do you have motivations or not? Who is your motivations? When I think about my daughter, I don't want to be a burden to her, taking care of me if I'm not well, I run out of enough uh, money uh, to feed myself, then I get to ask her to give me pocket money. I don't want that. So she is my motivator. The bigger the motivator, the larger pool of money that you will be thinking big and not thinking small. If you don't have any motivator, you may be in some trouble because you, your motivations is about, you know, work-life balance, YOLO, spend all your money as you can. You, you may get into that problem, all right? So be careful with this. Next, still about you. Yeah, you know, money for not living only. You need to have a life, not living lifestyle, all right? Next. So people say, you know, I got a lot of money. Why do I still need a, a PRS or a, a diversification or dollar cost averaging? You know, it's more than that because the PRS allows you to nominate. So there will be beneficiary. So, you know, the money will go to the right person that you have nominated. All right. So it's legacy planning as well. Next. A lot of people say, it's, uh, you know, uh, I'm very comfortable, but who knows, one day you may be in some trouble, but PRS is one of the very rare product that is creditor proof. Uh, meaning, if you are in some dispute about financial matters and people are taking actions, bringing you to court, they cannot go after the money in insurance, the money in uh, KWSP and the money in PRS. These three very unique creditor-proof product. All right? So it's still about you. Next. This is the most important one. Ladies and gentlemen, before I sum up tonight's presentation, I don't know what age you are, but are you ready to take a picture in your mind right now that you are 60 or 65 years old, how will you look like? How much money do you have? Are you rich? Are you self-sustainable? Or are you dependent on someone else? Do you live in a regretful manner? because of overspending, not enough saving, or you have a happy family kind of picture in your, in your mind right now because you are financially well and stable and your health is in tip-top conditions because your lifestyles afford, can afford that. Next, all right, this is very important, but next I have done the summary for you. So the key takeaway is this. You know, we are a global uh, leader in uh, pension funds. And if you want to go into the default funds, I will tell you straight away, uh, our best performing one is also the industry best performing one uh, for the Shiara series. If you want to go for default, go for the Shiara series because versus the competitions, we are the uh, more outstanding one, all right? So you don't have to go into the conventional. You can just go into the uh, Shiara series. And for diversification purpose, go REIT, go China, and go India. Now you have a plan, execute it well. It is all about discipline. 
your asset, make it invisible to you so that you never think about it and never touch it. All right? So accumulations is all about discipline. It is very easy to give excuses. I'm too young. I can wait. You know, I got so much expenses. I need to enjoy first. No. All right? Life is not like that to many of us. All right? The last ones. So, make the rest of your life the best of your life. It's not about at what age anyone wants to retire. It's when you retire. What income do you have? That is a bigger question and a bigger topic for everyone. So I would like to thank everyone here tonight. I want to thank the organizer for inviting me here. I hope you have uh, benefited from this. Yeah? Okay. That I've set the plans the options, and all about you. And the first time I show to my audience about my mom's story. Is there any questions? Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ng, for the personal and very, very insightful presentation. Uh, let's go ahead uh, to the Q&A session. Uh, dear participants, you can actually use the Q&A uh, tab to actually post your questions. So the first question here is that, uh, Mr. Ng, do you think the government will extend the PRS tax release after 2025? Okay, so um, we have been asking the same questions over and over again ourselves. Uh, because this is tax matter, uh, so it is about the authority. Um, the authority's decisions, I think it's only known to them uh, I don't I don't know uh, whether they have made a decisions now for the next couple of years or we need to wait for the next couple of years to know what is their final decisions. So um, I won't be able to comment about this because I'm not the authority. However, I want to highlight this. If you are someone very rich, I can understand. I can understand, all right? But if you are just average, Tax incentive is good for you. With or without tax incentive, you got to accumulate the financial needs of your, of your future income. All right, so tax benefit is a bonus. If the ILB continue to provide the incentive, good for everyone. But if they stop, you can't stop. It is your life. In fact, I think saving 3000 a year for the next 10 years without any returns will only be 36000 20 years will only be 72000 So you need some form of investments to give you the compounding returns. So that is the bigger thing that I can answer. All right. Hey, Thanks for the you. questions. Thank you, Mr. Because there was a follow-up question on uh, what will be the motivation to invest in PRS without the tax incentive, and you have already answered that. And the next question is from Klaus: What? How about population growth, aging population? Will it affect the rate investments? Yes, you know when a country enter into uh, aging populations, we have seen a lot of uh, examples in our in our regions or neighborhood countries. We have seen a lot in Japan, but I think maybe for uh, the most of us here uh, who has been to Singapore, you, you, can, you can actually see that. Um, the social demographic needs change. You, you are not surprised to see maybe at McDonald's or maybe at the food court someone who looks quite elderly, maybe 60, 65 to 70 years old, uh, they're still healthy and they continue to work. Because if they stop working, first, they don't have income to spend. So there will be a negative to GDP. 
So a country that with huge uh, uh, aging populations can grow their GDP very well because they are sitting on savings, their focus is on savings. They are not the young populations that is uh, consuming and spending. So it's a big issues towards the country. And towards the own uh, uh, personal basis is also another uh, big issues when it comes to this topic. So aging populations, if I can put it straightforward, maybe, maybe, all right, straightforward, not necessarily, but maybe not so effective. Not so effective because you can't contribute as much anymore. Not so effective because you can't contribute to the others as well. But this maybe can be overturned if you have a good plan and you are sitting on excess cash that you can do whatever you feel like when you are getting slightly older, you know, enjoy, relax, help out with the others, you know, go with ESG, the environmental, social, uh, good governance concept. It's at your fingertips because you can afford to. All right, so I hope I answered that question. All right, thanks, Ms. Tung. The uh, follow-up question to that is that, which PRS fund is good for aging population scenario? Okay, I... I personally like, I personally put all my money, all my uh, 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 PRS investments. Uh, sorry, can we move this slide? Uh, is yeah. I put all my money in uh, the the real estate investment trust right now, a hundred percent. I'm not very diversified uh, because I believe in property cycle. I believe in property uh, appreciations because of the last 10 years, the last few decades, it has proven that um, house, buildings, in good locations, in good management, appreciates in value up to 10% per annum on average. If you look at their long-term trade records, long-term average is about 10% returns per annum. So this is a good hedge for me because um, you may experience inflation that is higher than 10%, but that is not you know, a common event, all right? You experience inflation at maybe four to 5%, very common, but the 10% return per annum, and I still own the capital because the building is there, you know, the glass panel is there, the ceiling is there, that is my unit, all right? That shopping mall is my unit, I'm a co-owner, I'm a shareholder of that worldwide properties. So I like it, I put all my money in this. Uh, but you have a few more choices because you can hedge it against the most populous country in the world right now. Number one, India. Number two, China. All right. So that is my take. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. And on, on the question of China, right, since you mentioned that this is the right time to invest in China, uh, what happened to those who have already invested in the past two years and lost? And how should they bounce back? Yeah, okay. So, China didn't do well for the last two years, at least two years, because the governments and the policymaker are making certain changes. That caused, you know, their equity market uh, not to perform uh, well. But after the last two years, when I look at some of the latest number that is coming out from China, it is actually showing a, a good uh, uh, a good situation right now that the government's stimulus package is working well because they have also uh, launched 
a series of stimulus package. And from all the economy indicator that I've seen in various reports, it is very obvious to me that their market is now stabilizing, unlike the last two years. However, this country's GDP is about 50% tied to property sector. So a, a, a mainland Chinese will own 50% of their assets in properties and then uh, in deposits, in banks, current account, savings account, all kinds of deposits, maybe 30%. Investment, when you talk about stocks, equities, unit trust, 10 to 20%. So I think the China market is stabilizing, but when I talk about the 50% is tied to property sector, I think they will take the next one or two years to really recoup from their uh, uh, problems and issues uh, with their property sectors. Uh, so I think China is now uh, stabilizing. It may have some upside, but the upside is not going to be a bull run recovery because they are, they are the uh, link to property is just too much. And, uh, and, the, and the hole is a bit too deep. So I think it will take a, a, a two years or three years for a good recovery. However, having said this, we don't need uh, uh, you know, a, a recovery in China to see an impactful result. As long as you are in this part of the world, Asia, all right, India will accelerate and appreciate. ASEAN will do well. Asia will do well. It's not about China. So the word of diversification is important. So if you don't like this particular one, I think you are going to miss a lot because, you know, TRS is for the next five years, 10 years, or even longer. So when they stabilize, I think it's a good time to enter. Oh, that's a yeah, very thank you. well explained answer, Mr. Ong. And yeah. the question is here, it's like from Mr. James Lowe, it's that what is the 2023 dividend for Sharia Global Rate Fund? Um, okay. All right. So we have a growth fund. Our growth fund, um, and then we have our moderate, and then we have our conservative. First of all, you need to understand the nature of growth fund. Growth fund is mainly into growth stocks, all right, growth stocks. So what you want is growth of appreciation, less about dividend, all right, that's number one. Number two, um, the moderate fund is half-half, all right, between equities and fixed income. The last one is conservative that normally you can predict better and more consistent uh, dividend payout. But I want to highlight to you about, this is a unit trust product. The unit trust product income or dividend declaration is left pocket to right pocket. You know, when we pay 5% dividend, your price will depreciate by 5%. So when I talk about you know, uh, income funds, I'm referring to, okay, you you invest in uh, our moderate, but as fund manager, you know, I want to create income for you. So I buy dividend stocks. When they pay dividend, the price may not fall. I want to buy into properties for you because when property pays rental, the price will not drop. So I'm referring to, you know, income series like that, more than a unit trust or a PRS income distributions. Because the income distribution, if you are not age 55, you can't touch the money. There's no payout at all. If you are age 55 and above, you don't need the dividend actually because you can redeem 
a small portions by portions basing on your needs. So remember this, income by unit trust product or PRS product is left pocket and right pocket. All right, investment strategy towards income is the fund manager strategy, which is more important. So pick the right one like us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, the following questions are two from two different uh, participants. I'll just combine it together. Uh, KWSP is a good choice since recent years it has given around 5% of dividend. Can we voluntarily contribute now up to 100K? And the next question is that if you plan to invest 1,000 ringgit per month, would you suggest to invest in ETFs like VTO or PRS? All right, that's a, that's, that's a very good question. In fact, tonight's questions suggested that all of you are veterans, you are in the market, you know a lot, all right? Um, KWSP is always good. It's always good because they are the pillar two, all right? And we expect, you know, uh, uh, our government uh, to be really uh, concerned about people like us, our uh, financial well-being, and KWSB is a big pool of our retirement funding. Just that the data and reports that we are reading suggested that people just don't have enough in it. So you are saying something that is really good. You want to top up. You want to top up. And your question is more of, do I top up in ETF? Do I top up in uh, PRS? Do, you, do I top up in uh, other instruments, Meteo and things like that? So my answer uh, is, you need to know about yourself. Do you have the discipline? And you need to know about yourself, that how savvy you are. If you are savvy, why don't you choose to diversify yourself? Then you can allocate basing on how you feel towards the market over the next 10 years, 20 years. All right? You have a chunk of money that KWSP is managing it very well for you. But you can diversify on your own. So um, I don't have a straightforward answer for you. All the above that you ask me are workable, are good options, depending on your likings. If you don't need diversifications or if you like ETF because ETF fees and charges are low, but it's very passive, there is no outperformance opportunity then you may want to consider active management by fund manager. But all in all, you just need something that the financial guru said. Invest so that money make money for you. Thank you. All right. Well summarized, Mr. Ng. And the last question for the night, it's that today's rating agency just lowered China. Plus, uh, they had some geopolitical tensions. So should we wait for a bit for China or get started now? Yeah, so uh, of course, the best thing that I want to advocate is you can't really predict market movement and volatility. If you can't, and if I can't, I wouldn't be sitting here today, for example. So I can't do it extremely well, but I can get it right uh, more than 50%. I want to get it right at 60%, at 70%, in all my investment decision, then I'm a good fund manager. So in order to relate this, uh, getting 60% right or 70% right, number one, if you can do without concern about market movement, apply dollar cost averaging concept, you will never go wrong. Okay, number one. Number two, if you really want to time the market, as I said just now, this is quite a Goldilocks moment for China because we have seen the worst over the last two years. The way they started with Alibaba and then, you know, um, with uh, Tencent, with Meituan, with 
their educator industry, you know, to common prosperity and then back to pandemic issues, back to US trade war. We have seen a lot of this. That sounds like 2015 to me, but multiplier of 2015. But in year 2017, the market really, and when the market really is like when it rains, it pours. You know, the percentage is not double digit, it's a high double digit, you know, 30%, 40%, you know, when, when it really recovered. So, um, I wish I have invested in China 10 years ago and never looked back so that I'm not concerned about this. So I wish I've invested in China even 15 years ago when Bank Naga liberalized us to invest offshore. So all in all, uh, my take is whether you have invested or you have not invested, you know, speak to emerging uh, markets right now. I think it will do you a lot better than the situations that I'm seeing in the developed market space. So if I look at US versus China versus India, or even Indonesia for that matter, emerging markets, Asia for that matter, I will go for emerging markets and not uh, advanced developed world. All right, okay. I hope I answer that. Yeah, yes, Mr. Thank you a lot, uh, Mr. Ng, again, for the very insightful presentation tonight and for answering participants' questions. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, we hope that the session had been added value, uh, has been valuable to your investment decisions and your investment journey. And thank you and have a great evening. If you have more questions, uh, feel free to actually drop an email to us at investhelp.my and we'll be more than happy to answer any of your further questions there. So with that, have a good evening, everyone, and take care. Good night. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Have that picture in your mind. How do you look like when you enter into retirement phase? Are you ready for the picture, taking the picture short or not? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone.